Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Nothing particularly exciting this time. Um, we're covering some old ground, really, I think. Uh, Panasonic 3DO, um, this is, I believe, resetting, sort of rebooting, you know, glitching, uh, freezing, etc. Um, and it's believed to be the caps. I did ask him, are you sure the laser's okay? And he said, yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's for a friend of mine, this, so um, yeah, we'll just get the lid off. So before I do anything, I'm going to test this. I've just got the lid off, just have a quick look. Um, I've got you on Super Macro. I don't know whether you can see just between uh, those two electrolytics there we've got some black shit on the board can you see just down there it's uh, looking a bit dirty and it's the same down here uh, see how close I can get it's about as near as I can get I think just on these see these uh, little traces at the bottom not really the traces pads at the bottom there's like six pads at the top two there we've got some shit on yeah I'm, I'm sorry I can't get any closer uh, because of the drive I might be able to get you a closer look when we get the board out in a minute but yeah, there's uh, yeah definitely some corrosion around these two caps here. This one, I suspect, the big one, um, I suspect is probably going to be okay. But uh, I'll take it off anyway and just check it on the cap meter. I think and certainly inspect the uh, connections there. We'll look at some of the other ones on the board as well. Certainly, any of the same manufacturer will swap out. It's all connected up. I'm using S Video here. Um, we've got a couple of audio leads as well. So switch it on. Let's see what we get and hear what we get. Yeah, so it's booting. <clears throat> I'm sure there should be some sound. Maybe not. Let's, uh, let's try disc. I've got some originals. I've got some burn disc. Let's try burn disc first. So I've got disc in. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's having problems booting actually, but I mean it could be the caps that's doing that, that's having, you know, it's causing that effect. Yeah, it's having problems booting here, it's, you know, it's resetting and stuff. Could be the laser as well as the caps. Interesting thing is that I'm not even any sound. Yeah, it's really weird, there's no sound. I expect something. Anyway, that is, is working, there's just no sound. Um, and it did seem to reset a few times while it was trying to load, but that could be the laser. Uh, I'm not going to rule the laser out at this stage. Um, the sound is the main thing, there's just no sound. But uh, when I had the cat problem with mine, um, that's exactly what it was. In fact, it was sound that made me go and check the caps to start with, and uh, yeah, I was getting crackly sound. In this case, we're getting none. But we'll just leave it on for a period of time, because I'm just wondering whether the sound will actually come back. Um, if we just leave it to warm up, let the caps warm up, we might get some sound at some point. So, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just leave that running for a bit. And in fact, after a minute of being on here, if I just start the game, I'll, I, I'm sure it's the caps because um, even though I still can't hear it, I thought, well, let's just turn the volume up absolutely max. And if it is the caps, we should be able to at least hear something. You're going to get something leaking through there. So let's just start the game here. Yeah, we're getting some sound there when the volume is absolutely maxed out. So, yeah, it's just caps. So I think uh, with that all in mind now, I'll take the board uh, out and stuff and we'll just have a look at those uh, two or three caps around the power supply there and just check some of the others. Yeah, so I've got the board out. Um, can you see, uh, hopefully a bit better now, a bit clearer down there. Between those two black electrolytics, we've got some crap. We've got some corrosion there as well. So it's just the same as it was on my... Um, 3DO. It's going to be these two caps. This one was alright <coughs> actually when I took mine off and checked it and I swapped it out anyway, it didn't make a difference. Um, I think that cap's alright but then I later went back and swapped out this cap as well uh, and one on the CD drive. Um, <coughs> we'll take a look at the CD drive after. Uh, I found the RF test pad on there actually so we can check the, uh, the laser voltage. It'd be interesting to look at the um, um, pot position as well actually because mine never had um, a working laser in it when I got it. It uh, had been tinkered around with, uh, but all these other caps look alright. The points on all, all of the solder points actually on all the caps look a bit dull. They look uh, just as dull. It's amazing actually uh, how dull some of the points look on this board. But uh, yeah, this, I don't see any signs of leakage anywhere apart from uh, over here on the power supply. Uh, like I said, I'm going to swap that one out anyway. Uh, and we'll just check some of the others. 
as you can see I removed the first cap, just heat from underneath and uh, just pull the cap through. Um, so we can just pull, pull back a little bit so you can see the underside of that cap. But it's all black all on the underside of it, all the legs are all corroded. Um, so yeah, cap definitely needed doing. Um, so we'll, what I'll do is I'll clean up with some IPA and cotton buds here first, then get a bit of flux on there and use some desolder braid and just uh, you know heat the desolder braid to absorb the, the dirty solder and the dirty mess that's left there, then just clean it with IPA again. And uh, hopefully the pads should come up clean. Uh, so I'm going to do the same with this cap now. Um, I will order one of these caps, uh, the large one, sorry you can't quite see where I'm pointing here. I will order one of the large ones there, just in case, because I've not got one of those in stock. Um, but uh, yeah, initially um, it's going to be the same. I think it's going to be the same. That, that large one is a Panasonic one. That's uh, I think they might all be Panasonic actually. Um, yeah, I think they are. It's got a CE on it. Um, and it's silver, but it's the one with the silver band. It's a bit like on the uh, uh, PC Engine, uh, where they were all like silver print, but the, the ones with the solid white seem to be okay. Um, yeah, that one's a silver one as well. So, so yeah, it's no wonder that one's gone. So you're probably not going to be able to see much here, but I'm just reflowing the uh, damaged connections down here. Uh, yeah, they're looking a bit better. All I've done is got some solder and some flux onto there. Um, and then I'm going to use some desolder braid. Um, and you can see I've put flux all on the connections here. Uh, yeah, desolder braid onto where those cap pads were. And uh, just drag the desolder braid around a little bit. And you'll find that it's uh, yeah it brings them up super clean. Actually, it's, it's, it doesn't you know it removes the old crusty solder. Um, yeah, it's not looking too bad. I'll have to unblock the holes in a minute, obviously. Uh, but yeah, if we do the same with that one. Yeah, it's going to need a bit more work that one because that one's uh, pretty dirty. Well, let's see. I can see it's starting to clean up now. Actually, I'll give you a macro in a minute just so you can see it a little bit cleaner yeah that's not looking too bad so again that's about as near as I can get without um, blurring the shot um, so you've just got some IPA on a cotton bud here and I'm just going around uh, and removing that uh, sticky flux on all the areas I've cleaned so you can see I've cleaned up this area um, considerably actually To get a bit more desolder braid onto there because I could still see a little bit of solder on that uh, pad. Not sure what the six pins are there, maybe uh, for some sort of pogo sort of push fit thing at the factory, maybe the uh, push fit to those six pins there to check voltages or something. Uh, no idea. But yeah, anyway, I'll keep uh, cleaning this up and I'll give you a macro in a minute. So, a quick look at both sides of the board. This is the underside of the board, you can see uh, pads are pretty clean. And on Super Macro you can see I cleaned these uh, pads up here because they were dirty. There were two vias uh, here, I think, or three vias which I've cleaned up again. Um, and as you can see the pads look nice and clean as well. Um, yeah, well they're pretty clean. I've just sucked the solder from the other side of the solder pump, it's made them go a funny shape actually. But uh, yeah, I'll um, get some new caps in there now. I also reflowed that point there and reflowed that point there just because they were affected by the corrosion. These, ca these uh, resistors and caps and things here were okay. But uh, yeah, predominantly it was just um, this area around here next to this, this bottom cap. Just the same as it was when I did uh, my 3DO actually. So there we go, that's both caps there replaced and uh, the one over there replaced. And uh, it's, it's good as new underneath, nice and clean. As you can see that's those two. Um, and then we had this one here. And as you can see in here, that's working fine. I've been testing this for a good 10 minutes now. Probably a bit of Street Fighter on here. No problems at all. And the sound, I'll show you, it's only on 20. Four out of it, like right up to the very top to hear anything. Uh, so yeah, it looks like it was just those two caps. Uh, I did find the RF test pad on the CD. So I'm going to, uh, I need to attach a wire again because there's no other way to monitor unless you extend a wire off it. Um, I'll get the scope up. I'm just curious to test this. You know, this is an unaltered, you know, it's unrepaired if you like. It's an, it's an original laser, this 3DO. So it would be beneficial to measure the RF level there um, with the laser voltage set as it is uh, from factory um, against both the press disc and the CDR, just for reference really, because that was one of the things I wasn't sure about when I replaced the laser in mine, and mine perhaps needs adjustment. But it's a bit like my Saturn, it's one of these things that since I did that repair video, 
I've probably spent an hour, an hour and a half using the system, maybe two. I've probably spent an hour at least on a load of dark and an hour testing space all when I got that recently. Um, so it's hardly had any use, but the point I'm trying to make is it probably needs that laser, you know, the RF level checking in order to get the laser voltage set just right online. Uh, but this doesn't need anything doing to it now really other than just reassembling the book. Um, anyway, let's get the scope onto that uh, RF pad. So I should have covered this right at the start really. Uh, you need to get uh, the screws out for the drive first. Um, this cover comes off, it just uh, you know just clips up at the sides uh, and as you can see at the back it's tucked in under these four things here so you just sort of you know, pull it pull it forward, sort of up and forward like that. Uh, that gets that off. Um, yeah your ribbons, these just pull out, you can just pull them out just carefully. Um, it's not easy to do with one hand. Uh, let me just try and see if I can show you. Yeah, so you can see them a bit better there now. Just want to use both hands and pull them up carefully. You don't want to crease them. That's it, like that. And then the whole drive unit comes out. So then when it comes to getting the board out, it's all of the screws you can see um, that are visible, you know, all the way around that hold the shielding on. Um, there's quite a few of them, and then once you've got that piece of shielding off, uh, you'll probably need to take this piece of plastic off first, actually, as well. Can you see? It's just like a little clip here. You just uh, so I can show you this. Uh, just put it down. So, I mean, it's simple stuff. This, but if you're not engineering minded, you might not be able to work it out. It's just a case of just bending them that way a little bit on both sides. Um, yeah, and then this piece of plastic just comes off like that. So that's how you do that. Um, the switches, you know, they just float, they're just sitting there like that. So you've got to make sure you've got them the, the right way around because obviously one's power, one's uh, eject. Um, once you've got the board out, there'll be two screws still here um, holding the board in and the board should just come out then. You will need to obviously just lift this metal bracket here and lift this piece off once you've got the screws out as well. But anyway, right now let's have a look at the RF uh, test pad. Yeah, so quite hard to find, it's took me a while. Can you see RF just up on my thumb there and it's pointed to this pad. Uh, here, so we'll attach a wire and just uh, put you know have that wire coming out the side of the drive just so I can uh, get my scope onto it. So, as per previous videos, uh, we're just going to measure off the two volt test pattern there. You know, it's like a square wave, two volt peak to peak, and just uh, adjust it if we can so that we fill the display there. Can you see? Uh, we're right on the bottom and we're right up to the top line there, so 8 divisions, each block is 0.25 of a volt. Um, if we now connect that up to the RF test pad, just bear with me. So I need to wait for uh, an audio track really before we can get anything meaningful from this. So it's still booting there, let's just wait to get to an audio track. There we go, we're on an audio track. Uh, let's just try and double that so we've Got it set to uh, 10 millivolt per division set in there, so each one's 0.125 of a volt. Um, let's just move it up a bit, or down a bit, I think. Got one, two, three. Yeah, that's pretty low. It's 0.125 times three there. Uh, that's with a burnt disc. Let's just try uh, a press disc. So we're looking at um, press disc here at the moment. We'll just wait for an audio track because it's bouncing around a fair bit. Um, I had to knock it down to 20 millivolts per division. The scope uh, probe is on times 10 uh, setting for the impedance there, otherwise it, you know, you could cause a problem with the RF uh, signal. Um, and I just did exactly what I've done in previous videos, calibrate it using the 2 volt um, peak to peak test here. Then once I've done that and filled the screen, just drop the uh, voltage base here um, to double. Uh, you know, so basically each division is 0.125 of a volt. So on a press disc here, as you can see, if we just, uh, just wait for an audio track, Right, so we've got an audio track there now, uh, and if I just move it down to the bottom here, we've got one, two, three, four, and a half divisions. So that's like 4.5 times 1 point, uh, 0.125. Each one's 0.125 at the moment. On the CD audio track here, you can see, um, and this is with a CDR, yeah, three blocks. So yeah, it is a bit less voltage here. It's usually set to a specific level. You know, you want to set it within a certain window according to uh, you know the service manual um, for these things um, typically you know sort of between anything from between 500 millivolts up to 1.35 volts but they vary quite a lot some systems it's between 800 
or 900 millivolts up to say 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. This system is quite low. Um, again, this is very similar to what I sort of saw on the GameCube when I was looking at the DVD. Um, you know, the RFN and RFP um, test signals there. They were um, very low, sort of in the 300 millivolt uh, level. This is uh, not far off actually on a CDR, but as we saw earlier on um, a printed disc, it's a bit higher. It's around the 500 millivolt uh, mark, I think. All done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.